Hello, everyone, and welcome to Loop and Learn's deep dive into dynamic ISF with Mike Plant. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting uh, discussion, and and your questions will be taken. And you've got Mike; it's it's one of the best things you're going to have today. Um, okay, Mike. Next one. IAPS and Loop are do-it-yourself closed-loop algorithms to help automate insulin delivery. They are experimental and not approved by the FDA or other regulatory authorities. And the dev branch is even more experimental. This presentation is provided to assist you in making your own decisions in consultation with your healthcare professionals regarding your own diabetes self-management. You take full responsibility for building and running the system and do so at your own risk. And reminders, uh, if you have questions, please absolutely put them in the chat. We've got a lot of evidence that can, can help with your questions or raise your hand. Um, and the hand raise hand thing is, is located in your reactions menu in the Zoom toolbar. And please keep your mics uh, muted uh, to minimize the background noise. And um, helpful thing is the mute button is down in the lower left corner. Anyway, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. And Mike, take it away. All right. So hello, I'm Mike. Um, today, we're going to be talking about dynamic ISF in IAPS. Um, so there's two different Two different versions you can use. You can either use the logarithmic version or the sigmoid version. Um, last week, hopefully, you saw that presentation um, with Magnus and Teresa. If you didn't and you're watching this on YouTube in the future, um, go ahead and watch that one first. So the part of the problem with the, the dynamic settings is that there's so many different settings that you can set, and they all affect everything. And some of them affect other settings. Um, so this is just kind of a, a web of a bunch of different things that are different settings that are available in IPS with the dynamic settings. So we've got uh, dynamic ISF, um, profile ISF, your target blood sugar, dynamic carb ratio, the insulin peak. So whether you're using FIASP or LiumGev or Humalog or whatnot, um, sigmoid, logarithmic, your total daily dose um, from the past two weeks, as well as the from the past 24 hours, uh, and your adjustment factor, your auto sends min and your auto sends maximum. So all of those different settings um, can be a little bit hard to figure out how they all work together, which is why we have some graphs. So I'll copy and paste these into the chat um, if you want to, if I can find the chat. You probably have to stop share, Mike, in order to copy and paste. There it is. We did it. Okay. All right. So, um. So each graph, um, there's three different graphs in here, um, one of them for logarithmic, one for sigmoid, and one that has multiple graphs all just overlaid on top of each other. That way, if you wanted to compare different settings and have both graphs on the same uh, screen at the same time, you can do that. Um, I've also split it into whether you use milligrams per deciliter or millimoles per uh, liter. Um, so just click on whichever one you use. So I use milligrams. All right, so here's our graph. Um, and on the, the bottom here is your current blood sugar for the x-axis, and the y-axis is the your ISF. Um, so this this blue blue line here is what the the algorithm calculates that your ISF should be, um, and it's different settings go into to affect that line there. Um, and then the the highlighted section is the only 
it's the like the safety range essentially. So it's only IAPS is only allowed to set your ISF between these two values. Um, so anything that's above here, it won't set. So like if your blood sugar is say 89, it's going to set your, if the settings that I've put in the left, um, it would make your blood sugar, your ISF 49. Um, if your blood sugar went up to 135, it would make it your ISF 38. Um, but like if it went past this line up here, like this line ends about 57. So anything to the anything above this line is still your ISF is still going to be 57. It won't set it to 99 or 100 if your blood sugar is 40. Um, it'll cap it at that top value. Um, so the way that this value, the the blue line is calculated is it's the, the main thing that it bases it off of is your total daily dose. So as your total daily dose, if it's less, it's gonna make the ISF less for everything. Um, less, remember, is a bigger number. Um, bigger number means weaker. So as you have less total daily dose, your ISFs are going to get weaker, more total daily dose, and it's going to get stronger. Um, so that's, um, it kind of uses a, if you really want to look at all the math, it's all down here to like figure out how it's, how it makes everything, but it can be, I'm just going to hide it. Uh, where was I? So on the left here, you would to, to figure out your settings, you would put in your your total daily dose. Um, so let's say it's it's 50 for you. Um, so that's what it's gonna the, the, the dynamic ISF is gonna set your ISF to. Um, you're also going to want to set your insulin peak time because that affects logarithmic. So if you have, if you've, if you've set your own custom insulin peak time in ISF or uh, in a, in IAPS, you can put that here. So like if you're using LumeJev or something and you've put in a custom of 45, you would change this to 45. Um, if you didn't put a custom and you're using a rapid acting, like Novolog or Humalog, it would be 65. And if you're using Leumjev or Fiasp and you have ultra rapid toggled on in your settings, then it would be, it would use 50 for this value. Um, so it, it doesn't make a huge difference in the graph, but you can see it, it does change it a little bit. Um, so the, the next big thing that affects it is the adjustment factor. So if you have the, the default setting for adjustment factor is really based more on the sigmoid value, um, which is why it's set to 0.5 by default. But if you notice here, um, like 0.5 for most people will make the ISF way too weak and then like basically you're for like in this instance, this person would be getting um, anything less than 180, their blood sugar, they'd be getting the lowest uh, possible ISF it's allowed to set. Um, so it'd be, or not the lowest, the, uh, the weakest. So your, your blood sugars would probably be raised um, and elevated and it'd be harder to get them down because it'd be thinking that your ISF is a lot weaker than it really should be. So generally, um, like 0.75 or 0.8 is a good starting point for um, for adjustment factor for logarithmic. Um, and you can kind of adjust this up and down a little bit, depending on if you want everything to be a little weaker, or a little stronger. So like if we, if we, if we, if we think that this is 
been a little too weak for us, then we if we put it up to to one, it's going to make all the the ISFs a little stronger. Um, now for this this highlighted section, it's mostly based on your profile ISF. So if your profile ISF is set to say 44, um, this blue line here is 44. And then the auto sends min and max is what percentage above and below your profile ISF that it's allowed to set. So 1.2 would be 20% 20 um, 20 stronger ISF. So it can set your max. Like if you put it to 1.4, you it would be 140% of your profile ISF is the maximum. Um, you can see that down here too. Um, it'll tell you the, the weakest ISF it's allowed to set and the, the strongest ISF. And as you change your auto sends min and max, those values get bigger or smaller. Um, so I think the default is around like 0.8 to 1.2. Um, and yeah, so like the the longer, the, the bigger you make this, the, the more leverage you're giving IAPS to set your um, your ISF further from your profile target. Um, also down here, you can see there's a, a graph here. We'll show you, uh, so the X for like different blood sugar values with the settings that I've set up here. It'll show um, your calculated ISF for that value, um, the auto sends ratio. So like 1.08 would be 108%. Uh, um, and then it'll also show you your carb ratio. If you have dynamic, if you have dynamic carb ratio turned on, um, then like your profile carb ratio will also be affected by the auto sense ratio. Um, so any questions on, um, logarithmic Mike do you have any thoughts on how people should determine how much flexibility they want to give uh, IAPS in raising or reducing their um, ISF and carb ratios I guess carb um, is not really affected this is just ISF right uh, well if you have dynamic carb ratios turned on um, right. it'll also be affecting your your that, carb ratio right yeah um I mean it's kind of it, it depends on the person, depends on your experience with it, how much of a, a risk you want to take for like the the bigger you make the values, like the more, the the weaker you put the safeties or like the, the more rain you give it, the more it's allowed to do things. So like if you put your auto sends max at, I wouldn't say ever to do this, but like if you put it all the way up at two, that means with these settings, if your trigger is 250, it's going to double your ISF um, or make it twice as strong, um, which could be way too much insulin for you. And then you'll crash and you'll go low because it's going to give you way too much. Mm -hmm. um, so generally, if you're um, like, that's kind of why the, the defaults are relatively conservative of like 0.8 and 1.2 because then it's it's only going to allow it to set at 20 percent higher than your your profile isf but also if your if your profile isf is it doesn't match with your total daily dose at all so say you think that your isf is 90 or 85 but your total daily dose is 50 and you have logarithmic on it's still not, it's going to set everything to your highest, um, your strongest, or, yeah. So like 73 is going to be the, the strongest ISF it's going to be able to set. I've read discouraging, the comments discouraging use of um, dynamic carb ratios. Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, 
it's some people it works for them some people it doesn't it kind of depends on on your methods um and like how you use the system um like if if you have it a lot stronger and you're entering carbs and your blood sugar is 250 and you've got some real aggressive settings in here and it's saying your carb ratio is 1.8 times what it uh, what it normally is like you might be getting and then you eat 300 grams of carbs and enter it you're going to get a way more bolus than you need um so it's just like another thing to to, to consider but also if you're if your triggers are higher than and you've been using more total daily dose lately um then maybe you do need a little more insulin for those meals so that's how it can help some people with the uh, dynamic cr turned on Um, so for the, the insulin peak time, I just wanted to, to comment that the, the settings in here for this graph and for logarithmic dynamic ISF is only, th that only affects logarithmic di dynamic ISF. Um, the default for your custom peaks that ISF or that, um, that IAPS uses for like for other settings is not necessarily 65 and 50 for rapid acting and ultra rapid. Um, but for some reason, I'm not entirely sure why, because I just, I can read the the equations from the code, but I didn't put them in there. So I'm not, I'm not exactly sure why these values were used, um, but that's the way that the code is. So that's the way that there are in this graph. So, Mike, for people who have not turned on the dynamic functions, should they not be using um, those figures? I'm sorry, what do you mean? Oh, if someone is not using um, the logarithmic, they don't have their dynamic functions turned on, would would the, like you've got, you know, uh, ultra rapid 50, would that still be appropriate to use? You're saying that these numbers are only appropriate for when you're in the dynamic functions. I'm I'm saying that so in in IAPS um you can set let me find the actual name so if you go into to preferences and you go down to um use custom peak time right um if you toggle that on you can change the custom peak time to whatever you want mm -hmm. um if you have that off then for just for this this equation here just for this logarithmic dynamic isf equation if you're using a rapid acting it's gonna set this value of this equation to 65 and this one to 50. Okay. um so i'm not i'm not commenting on like what peaks you should be using for a custom peak depending on what insulin for anything else um it's just how it affects this equation. Not sure if that yeah, really thanks. answered the question. Yeah, thank you. That's very helpful. But to be to be clear, the the IAPS settings are a bit confusing because do you have that value that is set? I think mine was set seventy five for default, but that you can set that value to four million. It will still never be used until you turn on use custom peak time. So it's can kind of counterintuitive so would you say that unless you turn on custom peak time uh the, the like iaps will use the value based on which insulin you've chosen in your pump right so normally the the way to go is to just don't enable use custom peak time and iaps will figure it out based on your insulin correct um okay good thanks yeah, and actually that, because you used to in, I think it's still in main, where in preferences, you can select ultra rapid or um, rapid acting. Um, and I think in dev now it's been switched so that just depending on what insulin you choose in your pump settings, um, it's automatically selects. So if you, if you choose Fiaspre, Liam, Jev, it'll use the ultra rapid. If you use Novolog, Apidra, uh, hemolog, it'll use the other one, uh, rapid acting. Yeah, it got removed. You're, you're right. 
Yeah. But but only in dev, not in main. Um so something else with, with logarithmic here. So I mentioned before, so you can have uh total daily dose, your la it uses the last 24 hours value for your total daily dose, and it also uses the average total daily dose from the past two weeks. Um so if you're if you generally are using 50, but like this week you're using you know, maybe twice as much, like you're eating a lot more stuff or your site's bad or you're taking steroids or something and like it doubles, it's going to make this curve a lot stronger um, or weaker, like your your 24 hours will affect it. Um, but it, it kind of averages your last 24 hours with your last two weeks um and you can you can set the ratio of how much of the past 24 hours it uses and how much of the past 2 weeks it uses so there's a a setting called uh weighted average of tdd weight of past 24 hours so if you i'm not saying to set this this high um realistically most people just keep this at the 0.65 the default um unless you have any other reason to to change it you can just keep it at the 0.65 but if you put it up to like 0.95 it's going to use pretty much only your last 24 hours and it's not going to use your last two weeks much at all if you had it all the way down to like 0.05 um your your last 24 hours isn't going to affect it much but your two weeks is going to affect it a lot more um, I don't think you can set it to zero, and I don't think you can set it to one. Um, but like I said, most people just keep it at the the default 0.65. Um, and that kind of weighs it a little bit so that if you're, your last 24 hours are you're using more insulin, it's going to make your ISF stronger so that you're going to get a little more insulin. But it's not going to drastically increase it way more than your usual. Any other questions before I move on to sigmoid? All right. Um, so for sigmoid, um, it's a it's a completely different kind of kind of approach, um, like uh, Magnus and Teresa touched on last week. Logarithmic is kind of more trying to mimic what your body would actually do in a situation. So as your blood sugar gets higher, you're gonna need more insulin, and as your total total daily dose is increased, you're gonna need more. So your ISF is gonna become stronger. Um, with sigmoid, it's more about what your target blood sugar is and what your current blood sugar is. And so the, the, the further you are from your blood sugar, the more that sigmoid is going to affect your ISF. Um, it doesn't really care about your total daily dose much, though. So say if you're, if you're, Profile ISF is set to 100. Um, then this this red line here, just like the the blue the, the blue line on the last graph, um, is so the the x value is your current blood sugar, and the uh, y value is what your ISF is going to be set to. Um, and it'll automatically always stay within the the highlighted section for sigmoid, which is also another little difference. Um, so yeah, as you, if you increase or decrease your target, um, 
Sorry, I meant your profile. Where's the profile ISF go? Oh, your profile ISF. Um, it'll raise and lower the entire uh, graph. And then the adjustment factor um, kind of smooths or strengthens the curve. So if you had it all the way at 0.1, it's going to be a much more linear looking curve or a much slower uh, rising and falling curve. If you put it all the way up to, you know, don't put it up to 1.5, but if you put it up way up that high, um, it would make this a lot steeper. So for this one, like, you only need to get to 115 ISF or uh, blood sugar before your uh, ISF is increased to 90. Whereas if it was down to something more reasonable like 0.5, it wouldn't hit 90 until like 140. Um, so if you want, if you want it to to increase your your ISF faster, um, sooner in your blood sugar rising, you would increase the adjustment factor. And if you wanted it to to more slowly increase, um, you would decrease the adjustment factor. But 0.5 is a is a good starting point for most people. Now for, for sigmoid, the auto sends and the auto min, um, they adjust the the height and the yeah, the, the height of the graph. So as you if you put this all the way up, you know, if, if you put up to like 1.5, um, it's generally not advised to, to go more than 1.5. Um, just because it can uh, many higher than that, like you might be getting way more insulin than you probably need. And depending on like your adjustment factor or other settings, um, it could could be more dangerous to have this up higher than that. Um, some people do, um, but uh, teach their own. Um, it'll also uh, same as the, the logarithmic. I've got the the weakest ISF and the strongest ISF in here. So as you adjust these, you can see like the weakest that it's going to make it, the strongest that it's going to make it. Uh, just keep in mind that like you know, it can only go to like forty here. So like realistically, your CGM is never going to be more than forty. So even if it's if it's forty, it's your weakest is going to be one thirty three, um, and it's not going to use any of these values because your CGM is never going to read any of these values anyway. Um, I suppose if you did a manual entry, but. Um, so total daily dose for sigmoid, the way it affects it is it, it's kind of similar to how uh, adjustment factor affects it. So like adjustment factor will change the, the steepness of the curve and your the difference between your past 24 hours and the past two weeks will also affect it. So if you're running, if you're using twice as much insulin as this week as you did or uh, the past 24 hours as you did the past two weeks, um, it's going to raise your raise and lower your ISF a lot faster. Um, if you're using less insulin this week or this past 24 hours in the past two weeks, it's going to make it a lot smoother and more conservative. Um, but whether you're like, if these are both 22 or they're both 122, it's still going to, those will be the exact same because the ratio between them is the same. Um, Similar to logarithmic, if you have dynamic carb ratio turned on, then it'll also affect your carb ratio in the same percentages as it's affecting your ISF. Um, so if, as you change your profile carb ratio, 
you can see that the, the strongest that it's allowed to set and the weakest that it's allowed to set is going to change, as will the uh, the numbers in this chart here. Um, and just to, to mention again, so like uh, this, the red line here is your profile ISF. So like if your profile ISF is 130, this line here is going to be 130. So when your uh, blood sugar is at the target, it's going to be your profile ISF. So if your target is 100, um, your profile ISF is 130, it's going to be the 130 here. If you raised your target um, to like 130, though, then at 100, it's going to be a weaker ISF, but at 130 now, um, yeah. So if you put your target at 130, then it's going to be your profile ISF at that value, at your target. Um, and it, it'll work even if you do a, a custom profile and you set the, a different target blood sugar in a profile, it'll use that value for your target. Um, I don't think it'll use the, if you set a temporary target. Um, I'm actually, I'm not sure about that. So I'll, I'll check and post it in the, the description of this video, whether temporary targets is affected that same way. Um, any questions on sigmoid? There's so many factors here that you can adjust. Do you have any thoughts on where you would, which factors you would start with if you were having issues? Um, like for realistically for like, you should be mostly focused for, for everything on like your, your your profile ISF is kind of the the main thing to go after. Um, but like after you get all the other settings right, then digging into a lot more of these settings are more of just tweaking a little more. Um, because like I've I've kind of written out in the descriptions on the left kind of what to, what what each thing will uh, allow you to adjust. But it's that's that is kind of the the tricky thing about having so many settings is trying to figure out which one is the one to to adjust and why generally um, and why this is kind of more of a, an advanced session just to see how all the settings affect everything. Um, so if you if you wanted to go uh, further into your settings and tweak all the knobs and figure everything out, you can do that. Um, I would, um, Mike. I would add that. Possibly this is best once you're sure your settings are accurate. So once you know your profile, ISF, carb ratio, um, basal rates, all of those, once you know those are accurate, then this is what you would use to tweak things. So if things aren't doing what you expect it to do um, in general, then you probably want to go back and not adjust any of these settings. You want to go back and look at your, your main settings. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, that's what I was trying to get at, um, but you said it much better. Um, Could I just ask something? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So if your um, if your um, dynamic ISF, because uh, I, I have one on my watch, so I can see pretty much what what it what it is throughout throughout the day. So if that's um, say the same at certain times of days for for three weeks in a row, does that mean you should change your profile? ISF or just leave it the same. You mean your um your auto sense level is is the same at certain times of day? So you, on on the watch you can have it come up, can't you, on the display to say what your current ISF is? Yes. So if if that's slightly different, uh, it, so it's it's consistently different to say from from what it is on your um, profile ISF. Should you? change your profile ISF to match it or should you just leave it the same? 
Um, it kind of depends because like the, the thing about the dynamic is that it's based on your current blood sugar. So like if your if your blood sugars are and you like if you're using sigmoid especially and your blood sugars are constantly above your target, it's always going to be wanting to increase your your okay. ISF because you're above target. Um, but really, like it might be that your basals are just too low. Um, so that's kind of what Teresa was saying about about getting your your regular settings right first rather than like don't don't look at at dynamic as like it's it's not auto tune it's not figuring out this is what your what your ISF should really be okay um it's kind of just taking the the things the values that are available to it and altering like your baseline to make it more aggressive or less aggressive thank you Mike, I noticed that when you lowered the Autosense Min, that it had an impact even at the higher blood glucose levels. Oh, yeah. So um, that yeah, that was a, an interesting thing, too, I noticed with the graphs. Um, so that's something else to think about, I guess, as you adjust them. Yeah. Uh, where to get? Minute so yeah, like even if you address the the min um, or the max, it's still gonna affect that that min up here. Mm -hmm. So you really have to look at them together. Yeah. So like even even if you if you think you're just affecting the the maximum for for sigmoid, that's kind of why the where the graph comes in and helpful too. Is that like you might actually need to change your your other value to keep it to the same values, um, if you only wanted to change the stuff down here, um, you might have to tweak the the min, and then like you also might want to tweak the adjustment slightly to like affect that curve to adjust it exactly how you want it if you're that meticulous about it. Mike, there's so much here to digest. I have a feeling people have more questions once they've listened to this many more yeah. times. <laughs> I know I want to go back and listen to it again. This has been so helpful. Yeah, I think I, I spoke a little fast in some parts too. So hopefully uh, a replay will make things a little clearer. You didn't speak fast. There's just so much information. It takes a while to absorb. Yes, replay with the spreadsheets open. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's it's good just to, even if you don't really plan on tweaking the settings much, um, if you just open the graphs and just put in your settings just so that you can you can visualize what it's doing, um, that can that can help, I think. Can you tell us a little bit about how you've used the graphs and what changes you've made as a result of having the the graph information? Um I don't know, like settings are also so personal for things. Um, like like you had mentioned before about the, um, uh, like the setting that the min, like the max affects the min also. So like I've used the graph to, to make my, uh, make it stronger like when I'm above target, but not change the, the bot of the below target as much. Um, it's also kind of made me realize how a if you if you set higher targets or like if you use the the temporary profiles and raise and lower your targets um, that way, then it'll it'll show you like how much it's going to affect your uh, the baseline ISF. Mike, can you mm -hmm. can you clarify your last statement? I, I kind of lost you there when you said uh, about the targets. Um, so, so your, your target blood sugar, um, like if your, if your target blood sugar is normally a hundred in IAPS and you use the, 
like the the custom profiles and like say you have one set up uh to be less aggressive um for exercise or something so that like you set that one to you know 135 or something um it's going to shift it's going to shift this whole graph to the right mhm mm uh so yeah. yeah like shifts the whole thing that way so that um if even if your blood sugar is still the same down here it's going to be weaker yeah it's going to use a weaker value yeah okay thanks that's, a, that's really helpful because if someone's finding that iaps is just too aggressive in sigmoid one way to tone it down is to adjust your target while you play with your other settings to see how what adjustments are needed? Is that a, way, a right way of thinking about it? Um, well, adjusting your target is going to affect everything. It's it's putting one more setting on top of it. So like if you're trying to figure out um, like your profile ISF, you're you're not going to want to have to to use the dynamic settings kind of to figure those out. Right. You want to start there, like Teresa said. Yeah. And just a uh, follow on to that, when you're testing out your settings, uh, even with dynamic and sigmoid turned off, um, your auto sense uh, min max does adjust the ISF anyway. Correct. Yes. Yeah, okay. um, basically, the, the dynamic settings, um, both logarithmic and sigmoid, um, they kind of they take over the auto sense feature. So generally, when if you use IAPS and you have the dynamic turned off, um, it's going to use auto sends to compare your total daily dose uh, for the past several different periods and like compares them and thinks that if you're more resistant or more um, sensitive, and then it'll change that auto sends value to increase or decrease your ISF and everything. Um, if you as soon as you toggle logarithmic or sigmoid on, then it's it's getting rid of that. So it's it's instead of using the value for auto sends that the old calculations came up with, it's using either the the logarithmic or the sigmoid equations to figure out that auto sends value, which is what affects your ISF and your carb ratio if you have dynamic carb ratio turned on. Hmm. Thanks. Can you talk about when you would adjust AF versus adjusting AutoSense min and max? Um, so maybe for so like the min max will affect the I mean that the minimum, the absolute minimum, and the absolute maximum. So it it, it more it more so affects uh, like your higher and your lower values. So like if you're if you're trying to um I mean it it raises it like the, the min and max make it how aggressive it can be and the adjustment factor um makes it I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this um the adjustment factor adjusts how fast it changes it so uh so auto sends min and max change like the the vertical amount and then the adjustment factor changes the horizontal amount so by making adjustment factor heavier it's gonna it's gonna make your uh your blood sugars or your your ISFs change more at smaller increases from uh, from your target. So, like if if it's up really high, like if you had auto or the adjustment factor up up too high, that means like just a little bit over. Like if you just. Uh, I have this set way high. The target back to 100. Um, so like 
it'll put it all the way down here if you're just 125, but by making it a smaller adjustment factor, like it's going to be a much weaker or affect it much less when it's closer to your target blood sugar. Mm -hmm. hmm. Thank you. That's very helpful. And so <laughs> quick, there was a chat uh, question. I'll just read it. Um, is there a way to work backwards? If I want a certain profile and I'm sure my settings are correct, can I back into the dynamic settings that will produce the desired result? So it's like, it's it's pointing a bit to the to the moment where you and uh, Teresa explained that your settings should be very you know spot on, and then you start with dynamic. But sometimes you still need to adjust the knobs for the dynamic settings, basically. And I guess the, the question goes into that direction. So you know your basic settings are good, and you want to get like to a specific profile ISF. How would you change knobs? Or can you even do that? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I think that was that's basically what we were saying before about um, kind of focusing on your. It's it's hard to set your your profile ones based on your auto sends values. Um, Cause they aren't really, they aren't really calculating what it, what it really is. Like it, it's not auto tune. I think um, one way to look at it is um, when you adjust these settings, you're mostly adjusting the limits that you're placing on these uh, parts of the algorithm. So you're, by adjusting these, you're giving it more or less freedom to give you insulin. And so that's why the the core settings need to be accurate. And then what you're doing by adjusting any of these settings is giving it more or less abilities to make those adjustments. You're not actually changing what the calculation is going to be because those calculations are based on your profile settings um, and then your dynamic settings if those are activated. Uh, but your you're reducing or increasing how much freedom you're giving it to make those adjustments. If that makes, does that make any more sense? I don't know if it helped at all. It made a lot of sense to me. Thank you. That makes perfect sense. Cause I've, I've adjusted, you know, a couple of things gradually and it, it, you can see it, it makes it more aggressive. So it might give you a bit more insulin earlier on, so to speak, but I guess it's like Mike said, every, everyone's so different. It's, it's difficult, isn't it? Because there's there's other factors that affect affect all this as well. Yes, I think the the point, the important point is, if your settings are spot on, and which you know obviously the reason we have dynamic settings is because they do fluctuate, right? Mm. Even if you have them perfectly set, they're going to fluctuate because of whatever factor is you know impacting your sensitivity or carb ratio at that time. But if you have them spot on theoretically and you release sigmoid, for example, to do what it will, then you're still theoretically, again, not going to overdose or underdose because it's still using those core settings as what is um, what it's determining the calculations off of for your insulin needs. So, and that's all theoretical, of course, because... I'm not saying that you should fine tune your settings and then just release it without any limitations. But in theory, that's what you should be able to do once you have your settings spot on. So if you try to give it more freedom to make adjustments and your settings are not accurate, then that's where you're gonna run into issues with overdosing and under underdosing.
Yeah, in, in, in essence, you, to, to like support Teresa's argument, um, you need to have good settings because then dynamic settings will basically support you in the you know, fluctuations that life throws upon you. But if you don't have good settings and if it's a bit all over the place and you're like, hey, I'll just put it on dynamic because dynamic will be dynamic and you know, it can adjust it, it actually can extrapolate the issues. So Mike, quick question. What, what will you say? Um, Because um, I've personally been using uh, logarithmic because um, I'm kind of shying away from sigmoid because I feel that sigmoid is only doing a very good job at the extremes and not actually in the range I want to be in, if that makes sense. Do you have any any good argument against that stance? Because I'm, I'm, I'm still tempted to try it, but it's like I still feel that sigmoid is really, you know, powerful at the... Yeah, the extremes and like the, the threshold glucose ranges and not so much in like the range that I kind of want to be in and I want it to be very good and spot on. Um, I think that that's kind of the thing about sigmoid is that if you're in your range, it's not doing much of anything. So like if you just ran a perfectly flat line all day, your auto sense is going to be 100% all day. It's not going to raise or lower it. Um, so that's kind of why it's it's important to make your your profile ISF to be exactly where you want it for your target or like where you're going to spend most of the day. Um, like if your target is 100, but you're, uh, but you're spending more of the day at like 120, then it's always going to be stronger than your profile target. Um, with logarithmic, um, logarithmic kind of it it sets what what isf it thinks it should use it doesn't really care what profile you're using um your profile isf just affects the limits that it's allowed to set so it sets it based on um I mean, mostly your total daily dose but a couple other settings that we went over um so if if it if when you're normally a hundred, if it's like you can kind of use this graph to see what it's what it thinks your target or what it um what what ISF it's using most of the time at your mm -hmm. at your target range, and then if you use that one for sigmoid, then maybe that'll be a better starting point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because because I've always felt that logarithmic is basically helping me to be somewhat dynamic, but more so in the range that I want to be in. So I I it like it it doesn't let me go into like the more extremes until they kind of you know started to catch on and starts to adjust things, because it's already adjusting things more so in the like the medium ranges. Right, I mean, your, your diabetes may vary, but it, it's, it's what I found because I've tried to test on the one thing. Maybe my settings weren't, you know, so good to be used with sigmoid. Could could very well be the issue there, but um, I don't know. Do you think that, that whether you um, enter carbs and pre-bolus or don't affects which system is better for people? Um. I think you can be a lot, I think sigmoid can be tweaked to be a lot more aggressive, which is why, like, why people that don't, like, that are more fully closed loop, um, that aren't entering anything or just entering some things, um, it gives it a little more, more leverage to, to be more aggressive because you're not really giving it all the information to begin with. So by letting it do more, it can kind of overcome some of those limitations of you not giving it as much. Um, but it's like, they're, they're two basically completely different ways of altering your ISF. Um, so it's just kind of whichever one works better for you. Um, I, I will say for the uh, for fully closed loop and stuff, you you also don't 
need to use any dynamic. Um, like I think there's, uh, I just skimmed them a little bit, but Android APS just put up a, a fully closed loop section in their docs. Um, so if you read through that, they don't even have sigmoid. So um, yeah, take that for what it is. Okay, well, I think we've got a full hour, lots of stuff in your heads right now. Um, if you have questions, uh, please put it where, Mike, on IAPS. Yep, yeah, and IAPS through Loop and Learn. Um, yeah, okay. I should Thank have the, the video posted in a few days or next day or two, um, so you can just post on the comments in there, too. Outstanding, Mike. Thank you so much. Uh, I think everyone's absorbing everything you went through today. Um, thank you. I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. Thanks for being here on a Saturday. Bye-bye. Um,